What is up Flutter devs? Today we're gonna do another processing coding challenge based on the coding train. And now that I think about it, it's actually almost the same thing we did in the previous video, just a different application, but whatever. We're having some fun with processing right now. What we're gonna do today is we are going to create something like this purple rain. We're gonna create a purple rain animation where the rain starts falling and keeps falling. And we'll see how long it takes us to do that and see if we run in to any trouble along the way. Here I have the standard example app running. We have our 100 by 100 uh, processing canvas. Let's go see what we can create. First, I'm gonna start by changing the size of that canvas. We're gonna match uh, Dan's size in the video. He had, I think, 640 by 360 is what my notes are saying. Let's save that. And now we have our bigger canvas, good to go. Let's also set the background color. The background is color from, we will go, I guess, ARGB, 255 for opaque. And then the background is gonna be 230, 230, 250. Let's save that. And that did not update. Although, uh, no. I wonder if we're missing, no, we're setting it right there. Well, that is, it seems very light. But I'm pretty sure it's not working at all. Let's see what happens if we go black. No, black works. Is it just... Is it just so light that I'm not seeing the difference? I mean, that's that's not the color that he has there. What's going on here? What if we just drop one of these out of here? Okay, it's, it's being applied. There's just, let's, I don't know, let's take you down to 200. 200. That's too dark. 75. I don't know, I could mess around with this all day and not make any progress. We'll leave it right there. There's our, there's our background. Okay, now this thing about drawing rain. What is rain? Well, as far as we're concerned, rain is a line. It's just a vertical line with a particular thickness. Uh, and so I guess we could just draw it directly, uh, but in following in Dan's footsteps, he created a class called drop. I'm going to call it drop let to differentiate between the noun and the action. Uh, and then we will create a show method, again, going off of his naming scheme and fall. Each droplet needs to have an X value and a Y value. The length, I guess we can take in an initial length. We might adjust that later. We will take all of these into, what's the problem here? Why can I not generate a constructor? Whatever, I will type it out. Okay, uh, we will create a list to hold these things. On reassemble, we will clear that list. And then in draw, we want to draw all of them. Well, first in setup, we need to generate them. Uh, so for zero to 100, we will say droplets.add droplet with an X value. What should these be? V 
the initial x value can be anywhere from zero to the width of, uh, of our canvas. So that would be s random s dot. Well, here we run to the problem that we had in the previous video, which I haven't solved yet. S dot width is not going to work here in setup. Let's have final width equals 640, final height equals 360, width, height. And then we can just say random width. The Y value is going to start at zero, which is the top of the screen. And the length for now will make them all 10 pixels tall. Then in draw, we want to say for droplet in droplets, droplet fall, which we haven't done anything with yet. And then we're going to show. Okay. And thought maybe we'd see some. Oh, I haven't, we haven't drawn it all yet. Not only have we not done fall, we haven't done show. Uh, so here, if we're going to show this, we're going to say S uh, stroke color. Now here again, I'm going to go from my notes and we'll see how this turns out in terms of brightness. So those, that's the same color that Dan used. And I think, I guess we, did, did we never implement the ability to set the, the stroke thickness, the stroke width, stroke weight. I guess we never implemented that. So that's something we need to implement. That's going to make this exercise less cool. And so in the future, we need to come back and implement stroke weight. All we're going to get is a one pixel stroke right now. We will then draw a line from where to where. We will draw it from offset X comma Y to offset X, Y plus length, I think is what we want. Let's save that. And there are all of our little raindrops across the top. Now we want our raindrops to fall. In update, we can say Y plus equals, I don't know, let's see what happens if we add one. And there they go. So that's not nearly fast enough, maybe 10 and they're gone. Uh, once y, so if y is greater than s dot height, we want y to equal zero again. And they keep going and going and going. Now, there are a number of things, obviously, that we want to do here to make this more like rain and less like lines falling down the screen. Uh, one thing we want to do is definitely start with different Y positions. Right now we're starting all the Y positions at zero. I'm going to start them between negative height and zero. All right, so right, right there, big difference. So already we're a lot closer to what looks like rain. Now, ideally, we would have some that are thinner than others because they're further back than others, but we don't have control over thickness. We do, however, have control over length. And so I'm thinking we can take a Z value and, a, and multiply it maybe by the length. Now, Dan also took in a Z value. He kind of had a Z value that was arbitrarily between zero and 20, which I'm not sure if that meant something. But to me, it seems like a Z value between zero and one would make more sense. If the Z value doesn't map to anything physical, then why not just have it be a percentage? And then you can work with that percentage however you want. So we will require a Z value. And up here where we create all of our droplets, we will say Z is S dot random. Now I think that returns a double, right? Hopefully, hopefully that does what I think it does. I want it to be between zero and one. But then we needed to do something with that Z value. Uh, what we want to do is linearly interpolate the length. Perspective length. Uh, so we're kind of assuming that the length of all droplets actually are the same. 
but then the perspective length is how tall the droplet looks based on how near or far it is. We can say lerp double, and we will go between, uh, let's say, let's say 20% length up to length. We don't want any that are zero height. That's useless to us. So between 20% length up to 100% length, and we will pass in Z. Then down here, we will add perspective length. Save. All right, and you can see we have some that are larger and some that are smaller. Maybe we'll even go with a larger, a taller length, longer length, whatever. You know what I'm saying. There, now we've got some real differences. Now there is still an, a problem here, which is that the speed with which we are falling does not reflect the distance. When you're looking at actual rain, the rain falling right in front of you moves across your eye a lot faster than the rain way off in the distance. Therefore, we can treat this 10 as speed essentially. And let's go, let's go about 15, but then we're going to multiply it by Z. And it would also make sense to regenerate Z every time. Uh, so by the way, first of all, Y equals zero. That made sense initially before we were randomizing it. Now, well, actually Y, a Y of zero is reasonable in this case because the reason we scatter the Y value at the beginning is so that they don't all begin at the exact same place. But because they're all ending at different places, beginning again at zero doesn't create any problem for us visually. It still looks fine. But unless we want the exact same ratio of, in terms of distance on the Z value, we do want Z value to be a random number again. Save that. All right. Uh, now, some of those are way too slow. It looks like they're actually getting stuck on a glass windshield or a window or something, which means that we want a minimum speed. So I'm going to lerp double here. Like, What's the minimum speed that we want? Let's say the minimum speed, let's just go with eight and let's go maximum of 20 and Z is our percent. All right, much better. I think that's about as good as we're going to get with purple rain, which is not, uh, it's not too bad compared to this. Obviously we don't have the thickness. So that's one thing we learned. Let's, let's, again, we do these exercises so that we can calibrate what we're building in terms of the, the port of processing. One thing is that once again, we found out that not being able to query the size in setup after we set it is annoying Two, you'll see that. Dan is once again making use of the map function, so we probably want to provide that. Three, we need to implement the ability to change stroke weight. That's definitely something we're going to want. And I think, I think other than that, we're good. I still have no idea what was going on with the background color. But I think that's all the lessons. Oh, actually, fourth lesson, we want to be able to crop, uh, crop around the canvas. But with that, we have implemented this actually for Dan was coding challenge number four. We're not going to go in any particular order. I'm just going to pick and choose whatever looks like the most fun at the time, given the APIs that we have available. Uh, so this is our second coding challenge, but this was, this is number four in the coding train catalog. But with that, we now have purple rain. We had a little fun. I guess in the next video, it's time to come fix some of these things that showed up in, in these two exercises. And then we'll go back and do some more coding challenges. Regardless, I'll see you in the next video.